Hi guys, this is Mans from Quest for a Farm and I have a big cooking day. So be with me, this is going to be a slightly longer video than normal but I thought I'd bring you along for the ride. So tomorrow is Louis and my anniversary and I have decided to surprise him with a nice dinner. So I'm going to start my prep today. I don't know if you can see that, this is going to be our menu so for starters we are having a chilled chicken ballantine with a mushroom sauce for mains we're having crayfish thermidor with fondant potatoes um, fried off spinach and a corn puree and for dessert we're having creme brulee however my youngest son Nathan is violently, violently allergic to crustaceans, so I am going to have to, somewhere in the middle of all of this, get a lamb shank braised for him. So I am going to get the party started by chopping my onions. I've got a total of five onions to chop. Okay, so I just got these beautiful brown mushrooms from a local store. It's not even a, just a grocery store. Oh, I'm not the best at chopping mushrooms, so we're gonna chop them up relatively fine as well. Sure, sorry, that took me a while. Um, so basically we're just gonna peel our potatoes and I'll show you how we cut them in a minute. All of this stuff, the onion peels and potato peels and all of that stuff is gonna go into my compost. And now I just need to get some sort of measuring tool. Okay, I've got my board scraper and that's got some little measurements on. So what we're gonna do, I want other squares or rectangles. Oh, I need a bowl of water as well. Right, so let's continue. I'm going to try and cut them as best I can into pretty little like rectangles. Hmm. I don't know if I'm going to manage this very beautifully, but we try, we try. Again, don't worry about the waste of the potatoes. I am going to be freezing those for like a mash at some point. So I'm going to take this one and have my pieces, I think I like this one, so they are one and a half centimeters long, a centimeter tall, and about 1.2 centimeters wide. So one and a half long, whoops, just needs to be shaved a little on the side. Okay, so we have two fondant potatoes ready to go. I feel like I'm going to be peeling more potatoes, I don't think that's going to be enough. Okay, I'm not going to lie, that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, but here we have 18 little squares of potato that's just going to sit in this water in the refrigerator. I will cook it tomorrow. These are all my offcuts. They are going to go into the fridge tomorrow. I will see. I might well make a super, super herbed mash or um, not even mash like what? Pureed potatoes or something like that to go with our thing tomorrow. My next thing that I need to get started is my chicken. Okay, so let me just show you. I've got some beautiful breast fillets here. I need another bowl. Okay, so I have two bowls. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to trim four pretty little chicken strips. So all the 
spares go in that bowl and this is the kind of strip you want that it looks nice and neat. Let's see if I can get how many I can get out of here. Yeah, that one will do quite nicely as well. And the rest I'm going to chop up. And pop it in there. I need about mm, 300 grams in there, I think. This is a weird one. It's got a little tail. Just going to trim that off. This one I can't nope. Okay, so those are my four strips. Now I just want to make sure that I have about 300 grams of chicken. I'm thinking I'm pretty close. Let's just get my scale. Okay, so oh, I want grams. Okay, let's pop that in the fridge so long. Way out. Oh, I'm nowhere near 300 grams. Okay, 163 grams. So I'm just going to chop up another chicken breast. One eighty seven. Two sixty one. Let's see how we can get another forty grams. Three seventy seven. Okay, 303. That's good enough. So, this is going to just go in here. That's going to go into the wash. And these two are going to be saved for another day. Okay, so next up is making our chicken valentine. Okay, so without further ado, I'm probably going to have to do this in two half batches. We'll see. Okay, so we're going to put, uh, let me just try. Okay, we're going to put our chicken in there with a good sump of sour cream. So I'd normally use about 70 odd grams of sour cream. This I think is 250 grams. So, okay, so I'm using it, would normally be cream, but our shop sent us the wrong stuff. Thank you, Pick and Pay. Okay, so I've got the sour cream. So, what I'm doing because I'm converting it, I am gonna put in egg yolk. Oh. Okay, let's try that again. This is why you always crack your eggs separately. So I am going to put, oh, that's better, an egg yolk. And my eggs are going to go there into my eggshell pile. And, oops, in goes my egg yolk. My hands away, and then I am going to season with some salt, pepper, and paprika. Gosh, guys, I hope this all works out and fits. Mm. Maybe not so much. Okay, it'll be peppery. It's fine. And then a bit of paprika. Okay. 
Okay, so now we're going to blitz this up and we, what we want is a sort of like a mesh. I'm going to kill the sound because this thing is loud. Okay. That's perfect. And then this is kind of the consistency you are looking for. It's relatively firm and it'll hold itself together. So without further ado, let's put this thing together. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is get some plastic wrap here. Come on. Okay, and here I would say more is more. I've never made this before, but never mind. We'll get it right. So, oi. No, no, no. Ah. Okay, and another piece. Oh my word. <laughs> Okay, so this one stretched out really long, so it's okay, we can work with it. It'll go back over there. Okay, we're starting to get there. Okay, that looks good enough to me. So basically what you're wanting to do is create yourself a nice little surface on which to make your sausage. Well, sausage-ish thing. So I'm gonna probably do two. Okay, there's half. Now, our aim here is to create something that looks a little bit like a rectangle and is relatively thin. Oh my word. It's usually at this point cooking a sort of fancy-ish meal that I wonder why. For my husband on our anniversary, I can't help it. I love the man. My mother reckons he deserves a medal of honor. Okay, so remember those little chicken strips that we had a while ago? Feels like a long while ago. Okay, we gotta get them back. Okay, that looks okay to me. Again, guys, cooking upmarket stuff is not my absolute forte. So let's retrieve our chicken and I also need a pair of scissors. Okay, so now we're going to take our chicken strips and put them in the center. I'm going to put just a little bit of salt on them. I feel like I over seasoned the outside, so. Okay, great. Scissors retrieved. We're going to make two separate Sausages. Okay, one's out of the way. This one, maybe I should move this up a wee tad. Okay, and fold it over and roll it. Okay. So now I'm just going to squish that. There, whoosh. Okay, get the ends tied up. Okay. Can't be a sausage. Okay, you want a nice 
tight sausage like structure. Oh, look at me, I'm doing it. Okay, I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Oh, I can tie the end, I think. Yes, I can. Okay, this is my short end, so you got to tie that first. I did mention I've never cooked this before, hey? I hope so. So I feel like at the end of this tutorial it's going to be more like a what not to do than a what to do. Okay, that looks alright. Alright, yes. Sausage. So now I'm going to put my sausage in the fridge and I'm going to attempt to do the same thing here. Oh, see, just a bit of practice. This wasn't as bad as the other one. get that oopsie okay wait oh I messed it up okay don't worry oh, it's popping out I don't think it's supposed to pop out it's fine I'll just wrap it again it's fine it'll be fine okay I need more clean for Hi, you can see there it's popping out a little bit. So we'll just wrap it up. Make it reconsider its mistakes. There you go. See, it's all fine. It's fine. There, sausage number two. Slightly fatter and sloppier than sausage number one, but into the fridge it goes. All right. I will be back with you shortly. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give the whole kitchen a bit of a clean up and we'll continue making our sauces. All right, so while my dishwasher is running and everything, I am going to get started on the mushroom sauce. So this is a mixture of oil and butter and steak residue. We had some steaks last night, so um, I thought I'd save this because I thought it would be a nice start to the mushroom sauce. You can see it's relatively solid. So I'm going to chuck some of that in my pan. This in the name of <laughs> reducing waste. We don't throw it away. Okay, I'm going to chuck some of that in my pan. The rest will go... I think I'm going to cook this inside. The wind's picking up outside. So... This is going to go straight onto the heat with probably about a cupful of onions and two cloves of minced garlic and I'll take you over to the stove and we'll see what happens next. Okay, great. So now we're going to mince two cloves of, if you saw me doing the garlic preservation video, which I'll link down the bottom here, you'll know why my garlic is blue. It's fine. It's fine, it's fine, I don't mind it. So, like, two cloves of garlic. Yeah. Maybe three, I like garlic. And they're not huge cloves. Anyway. <laughs> the blue's coming through. Come here, garlic. 
Right, so now we just wait for that to heat up. Shock, the wind really is blowing outside. It better not be like this tomorrow. So you can see my steak butter oil stuff is starting to melt down. As I say, if you need to do this from scratch and you don't happen to have that, then you just use an absolutely normal dollop of oil in the pan and a knob of butter. Right, so uh, mushrooms have been going for a bit of a while. The um, other onions, or our mushroom onions, have been going for a while, our onions and garlic, so I think we can just about add our mushrooms. Remember the ones that I chopped up earlier? Here they are. Okay. I might, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reserve probably about that much. I might just garnish the plate with some mushrooms. Because we're fancy. Okay. So now you're going to put these in. As I say, don't worry if it's not beautifully chopped up or evenly chopped or anything like that. It doesn't have to be. Okay, making sure. Oh, this wind. I'm just hearing clang, clang, clang coming from outside. Should probably go check, but it's fine. We're good, right? Okay, so the mushrooms are going to start releasing liquid any minute now. And we're going to let that liquid cook out of them. Okay, meanwhile, our uh, corn our corn's just about ready and corn okay I'm just using frozen corn you can use whatever you want so frozen corn okay give that a bit of a stir around Our mushrooms a bit of a stir they're nicely releasing their water I'll show you in just a minute okay our corn can probably get about half a cup of water added to it with some chicken stock I just used it a cube I shamefully don't have a lot oh. Oh, I don't have any homemade stock at the moment. Okay, that can simmer away. And back to our mushrooms, which are going great galloping gummies. So they too are going to get half a cup of chicken stock in just a bit. Okay, yeah, you also want to make sure your mushrooms are nicely cooked through and we can start seasoning them. I've decided I wanted a little bit of ooh, spice in my mushrooms. So I'm adding just a smidge, literally a quarter of a teaspoon of our homemade chili powder. Some pepper. normal ground black pepper and some salt. Okay, that's going along beautifully. They're losing all their water. Our corn is coming along. So to the corn I'm just going to add a little bit of herby flavor. So let's rub it back to the corn. And the corn, I'm going to add some thyme. This is thyme. Please tell me this is thyme. Oh, that's fine. I'll add a bit to the mushrooms as well. It's not thyme. Here are some dried parsley. And the mushrooms can have a little bit of coriander. Here is my thyme for the corn. Okay, after a brief pause, we are back. Um, our corn is cooling in the background. It's not quite there yet. 
but our mushroom sauce is ready to be strained. So what we're gonna do is carefully, oh I don't know how I'm gonna do this, carefully. Pour the sauce, you still have now. Through a sieve. And then we're gonna smush. mushrooms. Once we've done that we are going to put them into this here little container and we're going to, oh what else, we're going to make somewhat of a mushroom puree. What we're going to use it yet for, I don't know. I might just plate some of it up. Okay. And the last bit of our mushrooms and sauce. We don't want to waste any of it. Okay, that's that. Smush that down. this to ooh, our little bowl. Remember I said in the beginning we don't waste anything so we're certainly not going to waste this. So there is our mushroom sauce. Don't know if you can see that nicely. It looks awfully thin but I promise you promise you once I've refrigerated it it will thicken up a little bit. If not I can always add some of my mushroom puree in to thicken it some. So let's give it a taste test. Mm. Really, really nice, really like strong and flavorful. So that's that. And then let me show you how we are going to puree these mushrooms. Hold on, let me move you. Right, so with the rest of my mushrooms that came out i just popped them in here used my hand blender gave it a bit of a blitz and this is what i ended up with which will also be going on my plate tomorrow i decided it's too delicious not to okay now we're gonna do our whoop like some if i were to put it on properly it would probably work. I'm probably going to have to do this in two batches, I'm not too sure. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, let me just... Okay, and then we're just going to give her a blitz. Put it on plate here somewhere and chuck the rest of my corn in. Okay, so you can go as much as you want with this. You want it nice and fine and smooth. So the only thing left to do is to strain this into another bowl. That's another bowl. This bowl will work just fine. Okay, so what we're going to do is. <gasps> Pour our corn out and start fiddling. Yeah, is your finished product. It will thicken up in the fridge, I promise you. Let's give that a quick taste test. That's quite sweet. I like it. 
It's really nice. Okay, and again, nothing will go to waste. This discarded bit will go to my chickens. Okay, so what we've got here, we are on the last legs of today. What we have here is a pot boiling to cook. Well, I'm not going to quite bring it to the boil. I'm going to bring it up to a probably about 80 degrees centigrade. And then I've got a pan heating up to cook our onions for our onion foam. So the onion foam needs to not contain any butter or oil or anything because it'll stop it from foaming. So that's why we just putting them in here. Look, my dishwasher's finished. No! My dishwasher's finished and my child is in the kitchen. Uh, what a happy coincidence. What do you mean? I'm not in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're going to let these go. They can catch a little bit at the bottom. That's absolutely fine. And we're going to let this temperature pick up some. All right, I don't know if you can see there, but our um, water is kind of starting to form little bubbles on the bottom. I'm still stirring my onions and I'm going to try and put one of my chicken valentines in here. I've got to tell you, I'm not having a huge amount of faith in them. So I'm going to do them one at a time because of my lack of faith. So that's going to go in and that's going to sit for about 35 minutes or so. Get in there. Get in. Okay, that's going to sit and cook for about 35 minutes or so. Hopefully it doesn't fall apart or do anything weird. And while we're carrying on, our onions are slowly, slowly becoming more and more translucent. Let me show you. Okay, so they are pretty much getting there. They're definitely not as sharp as they were. Um, so now we are going to add in round about a cup of milk. Just straight up normal full cream milk. So I'm going to say kind of to cover them. We're going to bring that up to the simmer and let it simmer away for a good half hour or so to extract all of that onion flavor into the milk. Okay, to this we are going to add some thyme and some bay leaves and some salt and pepper. Salt is very important. Salt, I believe, helps with the foaming process. As this is starting to heat up, I'm going to add a little bit of thyme. Fresh, dried, either is fine. Couple of bay leaves. Again, if you have fresh bay leaves, more power to you. And then I'm going to add some pepper. So I don't want my foam to have any coloration to it. So I'm just adding a couple of whole black peppercorns. Turn that down. I don't want you boiling. I don't think it's a crisis if it boils, but it doesn't need to. Okay, so I feel like my chicken's going all right. I feel like I am going to have to rotate it at some point so that the top can cook because the top's poking out a wee tad. All right, so I'm quite happy with this little infusion. I'm absolutely delighted to say that my chicken doesn't look like it's going to be a complete fail. I feel like it's getting harder. It's cooking. I keep turning it down a little bit because I don't want it to boil hard. I don't know whether it will withstand that. Um, but I feel like it's gotten that kind of like gotten harder on the outside there was some leakage you can see the water is a bit murky but now we are going to strain our sauce and stash it in preparation for tomorrow and I shall show you what I'm going to do with the onions 
Okay, so I have my onions. I'm going to strain it. Strain them. Okay, and that is going to go... Oh, hold on, so I should have gotten a scraper. Hold that thought. Okay, that is going to go into the fridge ready for tomorrow. As far as the onions themselves are concerned, they are going to go back into their little pan. So this is what our soon-to-be onion foam looks like. That's that. So our onions are going back into the pan. I'm going to just pull the bay leaves out. I haven't found a use for secondhand bay leaves. If anyone has one, let me know. Okay. Once you're relatively certain there are no bay leaves, back onto the heat she goes. Okay, remember we still have the whole peppercorns and everything in here. Put it back onto the heat. Into that we can put a knob of butter. Okay, so remember these onions are pretty well cooked. So we just really need to infuse our new flavors. So we have got the bay leaf flavor, we've got the milk flavor, we now adding a decent bit of butter flavor. And the last thing is a splash of cream. I might need an additional splash, let's see. Additional splash won't go astray. You can never have too much cream, right? I mean, you could at this point add some white wine, but I'm not going to do that. A, because I'm drinking it, and B, in fear of it splitting. Okay, well, that's the end of our cream for now. Fear not, I'll have another. Okay, we're going to bring this nicely up to a simmer or a boil, or whatever you want to call it. Our chicken's going nicely. I'm so excited the chicken's working. I had my doubt. Yeah. That's pretty much it. And now I'm going to set it aside to cool. Another quick progress report on our chicken. It's definitely firming up, which is good. I am delighted. I can't tell you how happy I am. I'll let my chicken carry on cooking. It's probably got about, it's got about 15 more minutes to go. To, no, it's got about 10 more minutes to go. And I'll bring you back once I have done the second one. Okay, cool. So our first little chicken roulade is almost, almost done. This is going to go into here. But this time of the day, me and this thing are very good friends. We've been through a lot together. Oh. Okay, so I almost have my tasks for the day done. Almost. I'm happy to report all of my little chickens are still looking good. Okay, that's that. Ow. Okay. And we'll give her one more blitz for all time's sake. Okay, and that is that. So we have, oh god, that smells divine. Oh, it smells like roasted onions. Let's just give it a taste. Mmm, yes, I think. Maybe a little more salt. Mm. Yes, that is amazing. Okay, so that's going to go in the fridge as well. So this, along with our mushroom puree, wasn't part of the original recipe. However, I had the stuff that you would normally discard after making it. So 
both of them could be used as a spread for toast, especially your mushroom paste could be used to kind of make a beef wellington with and your onion paste could also be used as a spread, as a sauce, as a side to flavor a soup or a stew. The uses are endless. So there you go, let's put it in a bowl and get it in the fridge. Okay, it is the next day, so now we are going to get started on our creme brulee. So we're turning on the oven, and into this tiny saucepan, I am going to put 500 moles or two cups of cream. Um, I got a couple of different measurements from various places. Some places say you can put half cream and half milk and some people say don't and all sorts but 500 more cream is the recipe I settled on. Okay so basically we're just going to give that a bit of a stir and let it slowly heat up. Okay careful you don't burn it but it'll heat up as we're going along. In the meantime I'm going to take you across to my table and here I am going to be adding half a cup of sugar to these here six egg yolks and we're going to start with them. Okay, and you can do this with an electric blender, but it's okay, I feel like it'll just be easier to whisk it up. Okay, you want it to start, you can see it's starting to go light in colour and you want it light and fluffy. Okay, to this now you can see it's gone lighter. I am going to add a splash of vanilla essence. Okay, again, you can use vanilla essence, vanilla extract, vanilla pods, whatever tickles your fancy. Just make it nice and vanilla -y. so we're making up a vanilla custard. Okay, that's just about there. So now I am going to start arranging my um, dish to cook it in. I don't have separate ramekins like a lot of people do, so I'm going to do one big one. And we are going to cook it in a bain-marie. So I'm going to preheat my oven to 180 and I'm going to just extend my cooking time. So without further ado, let's set that one up. Okay, I think you might have missed me adding the cream, but basically I added my cream slowly, slowly out of my pot, out of my pot, into my bowl, stirred it in, and made sure that it doesn't split or scramble. So I added it in about three or four steps. So in my next step defying task, I'm bringing my ramekin here. So as I say, you could have a couple of ramekins or you can just have one, maybe two big ones. I'm opting for option two, making sure our sugar's all nicely dissolved. My oven is preheating and we pour. I'm hoping it all fits in one. Ooh. Remember it's not going to rise or anything. Oh come on, fit. Hiya. I'm just going to have to carry it really carefully. Okay, we're going to put that there. I'm going to see if I can find another tiny dish to do this last little bit in. I might be able to. Hold that thought. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully transfer this bain marie to the oven and I'm going to bake it for somewhere between 30 and 50 minutes. So what I want it to be is relatively solid around the outside and slightly jiggly on the inside. After that, I'm going to pop it in the fridge and I'll do the brulee part this evening. All right, so now we are going to get going on our proteins. Creme brulee is 
in the stove. We've got another, I'll check it in about 25 minutes. So I'm going to start with the shank. I've got some water here. You're coming to the boil. There's our other little brulee waiting to go into the oven. And then I've got, let's see if a bit of light will be better. Okay, so I've got some oil um, heating up in here and I'm going to add a knobby of butter. One very frozen piece of butter. I don't know if you can see, maybe I need to lift you a little higher. Okay, there you go. That's slightly better. All right, so I've got oil and butter going in my pot. I've had my little lamb shank marinating in wine and garlic. So as this comes up to temperature, I'm going to sear it off in there. And in the meantime, while I'm waiting, I'm going to just add some salt to my crayfish water. Okay, so my lamb shank is seasoned and everything. So we're just going to pop it in there. You can hear there's a nice little sizzle. And here is the marinade. It's got some garlic, some red wine. I'm going to add some vegetable stock and we're going to braise this off for a good two and a half hours once it has seared. Okay, we've got a nice little sizzle going. So let's turn her over. You can see we've got some nice colour starting to develop. Go away. Okay, once we've got a nice sear, we are going to add our marinade with our red wine, our veggie stock, our garlic, our onions, and we are going to just leave it for the next two and a half hours and we are going to sort of continuously just check on it. Right. Let's move on to our crayfish. Okay, so as our crayfish water starts coming up to the boil, I'm going to make sure that the water is liberally salted. It should taste like the ocean. Okay, these are our crayfish tails. Okay, they're on the smaller side. I promise you every single one of them is legal. We um, got them from my mum and dad when they were still staying at the sea so they've been frozen for about three or four months and as soon as this comes up to the boil properly just like that we are going to put them in the water to boil they're going to come straight out of the boiling water into an ice bath which I will sort out as soon as I get in there Okay, so this is pretty close as damn it to boiling, so I am just going to pop my crayfish tails in there. They are going to sit for 10 to 15 minutes until they're nice and cooked. Oopsie. I feel like I did too many of them, but it's okay. I didn't, I, I thought that each of my packets only had two in, no, I was wrong. But it's fine, so those are going to cook for 10 to 15 minutes until they're nice and cooked through. Then on here, you can see my lamb shank is nicely coming up to the boil. That's still got hours and hours to go, so we'll be back with our ice bath once our crayfish are cooked. Okay, so it's been like 10 minutes, our uh, crayfish are nice and done. You can see the shells are cool, nice and red. And the meat inside is cooked. So we're just going to dump them into our ice bath. We don't want them cooking any further. 
because there's nothing worse than overdone seafood. Once those have cooled down, I will remove the flesh from the skins and remove the poop shoots and we'll show you what we do next. All right, I think that they have sufficiently cooled down. So let us try and chop them in half. I'm going ever so slightly left of centre. I'm not brilliant at this. Ooh. Okay, let's try it this way. We'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. There you go. Chop it that way. Chop it that way. Break it in half. And make sure we locate and remove the poop chute. So we're going to just basically pull it out of It's a little shell and we're going to break the meat up. You can see it's beautifully cooked but it's not overdone. I feel like this one was deformed. I don't know if it has a poop shoot. Yeah. Don't get rid of your Shells, yep, definitely a deformed crayfish. Shame. Shame, shame, shame. Oh, here. Yeah. Here are some of the poop shoots. Oh, dearie. Okay, so our crayfish meat is getting beautifully removed. So I think we figured out that it's best to do it this way. I'm used to doing this when they roll and they have these unpleasant little pokey outies on the side here it's not really sore I just don't like it it's like a weird feeling try not damage the shells because we are going to use them for serving Okay, so my creme brulee has come out of the oven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop these shells in. I've turned it off and everything. So I'm just going to let them cook in the residual heat and let them get properly sterile and clean and properly dried out. Okay, this is what our creme brulee looks like. I'm quite happy with that. It's sort of relatively set on the outside, a little bit wobbly on the inside, so let's get it out of the water. You can see I spilled a little bit. It's all right. Everything is okay. So get rid of that. So basically this is just going to sit with its last little wobble. And once it's come down to room temperature, I will pop it in the fridge and I will brulee it later tonight. I'm going to put some fine sugar over the top and hit it with the blowtorch. All right, and we are in the home stretch. Next up is our spinach. So I've just got a bag of spinach that I harvested and froze earlier. So because it's just frozen, it will contain quite a bit of water, so we want to get rid of that. So I'm going to pop it through a strainer. I'm just going to put it into my trusty sieve. Okay, and while I'm doing that, I am going to take this here onion and just slice it up. 
So it has been actually going relatively plain and simple and fresh. I'm not going to dice it, I'm going to slice it. And to this we are, we're going to fry this off with some garlic and pop the spinach in, give it a nice saute and that'll be that for the spinach. So then all I have to do is my potatoes and a little bit later heat everything up. But the starch is being served cold. Don't forget that. So let's take you over here. And here's my frying pan. Turn it on. I'm going to put a spot of oil and a spot of butter in there. Okay, in the meantime, oops, I'm going to get some cloves of garlic. See if I can find my garlic crusher. It's getting there, it's getting there. Okay, and again, I have my, oh, smithy blue garlic. There you are. It's looking gorgeous. I'm actually quite excited about this. Give it a turn, you can see it's starting to kind of loosen up a little bit. It's nowhere near ready yet, but it's starting to loosen up. I want to serve it all fancy like with the bone, so I'm glad the meat is pulling away from the bone like that. And I'll make a nice rich gravy for little once she's cooked. Okay, so back to our spinach. Ooh. That's right. Drop the camera. Okay, the onion and garlic is looking quite good. So we're just going to add in our spinach. If you saw my spinach preservation video where I just popped the spinach in the freezer, you'll know that I kind of quick blanched it. So it's still pretty raw, but I don't want it cooked very much. So I want the pot, the pan searing hot and I am gonna pop it in there now. Sweat it off a little bit and then I shall transfer it to our serving dish for later. There we go, good -oom. Trying to try to separate out all the leaves in that. Give it a whoosh around with the onions. Then normally I would do like a cream spinach type five, but because we're having the lobster thermidor, I didn't deem cream spinach necessary. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just leave it in the pan off the heat and that's good to go tonight I can just pull it straight back onto the heat so so far our starter is completely sorted out our main we are just still doing the lamb we have to do the thermidor sauce and we have to do the potatoes both of which are going to be done kind of last minute and then what else um, spinach is done, corn puree is done, dessert is completed, um, so now I just need to kind of set the table and make everything pretty. So time to rest and reset, let me sort the table out, I'll send you, I'll show you a couple of shots of that and we're done. Okay cool, so my lamb shank I'm pretty sure is done, it's been almost three hours so I'm going to take that out and let it start cooling but I'm going to turn up the heat and I'm going to start boiling this gravy all the way down and then we literally just have our potatoes and thermidor sauce to do um, oh, and then we have to brulee the top of the creme brulee, but that we will do right before we serve. So, the end is in sight. Okay, oh, I think that's looking pretty good. Yeah, it feels very tender. It looks like it's splitting all nicely. 
So, yeah, we'll just reduce this down and make a nice gravy to go with it. All right, so here we are. We have our um, gravy reducing all nicely and what we're going to do is we need to strain it. But I'm not going to strain it the conventional way. I'm going to strain it the homestead way. <laughs> so we're going to go fishing with a tea strainer. So just like that. Oh, if I hold it the right way around it'll also help. You see, it's working nicely. So we're going to catch all of this stuff. It's a bit like fishing for tadpoles. What? Yeah. <laughs> We're fishing for garlic tadpoles. That doesn't make any sense. It does. Look, they look like little tadpoles. In what world do they have little tadpoles? I'm not sure what tadpoles you're catching, Mom. <laughs> Why are you catching tadpoles? It doesn't make sense. I think this is Gen X versus Gen Z. Why would you catch tadpoles? Any Gen X annoys. I think the simplest reason to catch tadpoles is because you can. All right, see? Protein. This is what I mean. These are what my little garlic bitties look like. So like as they're floating around in my gravy, they do look tadpole-esque. And coupled with a few peppercorns. Those definitely look tadpole-esque. They're just missing a tail. So we're going to still reduce it down quite a bit. I'm going to give it a taste test just now. Let me do that. See, it still looks a little bit um, translucent, so like watered down. The flavor is definitely improving, but it needs to go a good while. Okay, right, so it has reduced just about all the way down now. I've decided I'm quite happy with the flavor intensity but it's still feeling a little bit like thin and runny to me so I'm gonna oh my word it doesn't belong in there it came from the out where is my what oh my word wait where's my strainer I gotta go fishing again that is horrific I did go in there right Yeah. I'm messing up your dinner. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit at a time of a corn flour and water mixture. Just, just a tiny bit. I literally have a teaspoon of corn flour in there. And I'll add it, let it boil, add it, let it boil until I'm happy with the consistency. Yeah, it seems like it's pickling up there. There's that stupid leaf. Go back from whence you came. Yeah, that's pretty much where I want it. It's still relatively runny, but you can see it is definitely thickening up some. Let's give it a taste test. Yep, that's perfect. Okay, so there's one more thing out of the way. Uh, now we can just turn this off. Okay, I have decided it's now time to start with our fondant potatoes. Um, yesterday I diced them up into relatively even little cubes. So now we're going to start cooking them off. So basically fondant potatoes is potatoes cooked in stock. So we're going to start by browning them off, which means oil and butter into the frying pan. Okay, so they have been going for a few minutes now. I just wanted to show you. They're getting some nice color on them. So we are just about ready. That one looks great. To start turning. So I'm going to start turning from the center out. Okay, so I just want to keep them moving. Don't want them to get stuck, which they are. Okay, maybe I must give them a minute to release 
Okay, and then we're gonna season. Okay, so we're just gonna let them get a little bit more color. And once they do, in with my vegetable stock, you can deglaze with wine, vegetable stock, just plain water. And from there, they are gonna go straight under um, into my oven outside and they will sit there for a good hour, hour and a half, I reckon, until they soft and floofy inside. So I'm just waiting for them to come up to color a little more. I want them nice and colored on the bottom. Okay, so we're just about there. You can see that's a nice color on the bottom there. So we've got a nice color on the top, nice color on the bottom. So now we can start adding in some herbs and spices. I've got some thyme. Some parsley somewhere. Okay, so that's thyme, there's parsley. Gonna just lob in the good pepper cloves of garlic. The food is very nice. Ah, thank you. And now we okay. are going to deglaze. Yes, I stop. Deglaze with our veggie stock. And literally take it outside as is and pop it into the oven or where it will sit until our potatoes are cooked fluffy. Okay, this is the second last thing we have to do today. And we are going to be making the sauce for our lobster thermidor. So we are going to start off by grabbing a knob of my butter. And in the meantime, I need to be warming up my corn, which I seem to have lost. <laughs> what did I do with my corn? Oh, yeah. uh, warming up Nathan's shank. Warming up the spinach and the gravy, which is fine. That's starting to melt, so now I need some flour. A little bit of flour. Whisk it together, and as you're whisking it together, add some cream. And once you've got your cream starting to thicken, you will just top it up with milk. It's that easy, and then we need to season it. Just pull it off the heat for a sec. Should never walk away from a roux. Okay, back on the heat. And we're just going to cook this through until it's thickening up. So I've put in a splash of milk. I think I'm going to finish it off with cream if need be. Okay, we don't want this to be super thick, but we also don't want it to be runny. Okay, I'm quite happy with it there, so I'll put another little dollop of cream in so that it doesn't, as it continues to cook and boil, it doesn't get much thicker than that. So to this, now we need to add our seasonings. Okay, so that was a cup of cream, a splash of milk, a rather large knob of butter, and some flour. Probably about a tablespoon or so of flour. Okay, take that off the heat. I'll bring it here now. Okay, then we're going to season the sauce. Bit of salt, bit of pepper, bit of parsley, and some chili. Okay, bit of 
salt, pepper, the way around. And you'll see it sort of loosens up a little bit when we add salt. Bit of parsley. And these you're all going to add to taste. Again, I'm not very fond of an absolute strict recipe, so it's probably slightly deviated from a classic lobster thermidor. But I don't care, because this is the way I want it. And then, chili. Okay, you only need a little bit. This is the chili powder I made myself. So, it's quite hot. And there you have that beautiful red color. Right, so that's ready. Our spinach is on the go. She's here. Our gravy is boiled. Um, so now we need our corn and our lobster. Okay, so here's our corn puree. I had decided it was a little thin, so I just want to thicken it up slightly, whoopsie. And I'm going to achieve that with a little bit of water and a little bit of mazina. Okay, so just add that in. And give this to Can I ask you to get plates out, please? Four big plates. Uh, okay. Can you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what are those plates that are on the... Nathan? The camera. Please get four red plates out. Okay. Thank you. So that's going to thicken up. And then let me just show you how we're going to add the lobster to our little pot of lobster sauce. And that's our lobster burger. So that's it. Okay, so last course. Everything's gone down really, really well. Um, if I must be honest, my least favorite of the dishes was probably the chicken valentine. I think maybe it was slightly under seasoned. But the creme brulee... I have high hopes for. Where's your blood shot going? Oh, don't you want to do it outside, rather? No, no, no. Okay, so we're just sprinkling a layer of sugar over the top. I'm borrowing Ruben's slow torch. That's how we roll on a homestead. We use the garage tools when we're being fancy in the kitchen. Okay, let me just, I don't know, how do you, how do you like this bad boy? With a light. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, so our aim is to get the sugar melting. Okay, we're going to keep moving it around, keep moving it around until the sugar is melted. This is the way I've been told to do it. Literally never made a creme brulee before in my life. Fire! 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 Okay, we've decided it's taking too long because I obviously put on too much sugar, so... We're calling it. We're going to give it a second to cool and then we'll see if it cracks at all. I have my doubts. Okay, we're back. We've chilled it a little bit. Not holding out high hopes and... <gasps> it did! Okay, that is amazing. It did make a crunchy. Okay, you can see on the back of the spoon with me. 
so the sugar didn't completely dissolve. But it's better than nothing. And let's see how the actual custard came out. Yeah. Happy with that. Better up. Okay, and then that is the final plate because I have lost the will to make pretties.